everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Timeless Photographer and Cinematographer Drew Geraci. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. And if you're a repeat viewer, thanks for watching. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up your camera to shoot perfect day to night shots and then how to process it inside of DaVinci Resolve. You're not gonna need any additional programs like Lightroom, LR Time Lapse, or After Effects for this workflow. This workflow is 100% raw and everything will be handled inside of DaVinci Resolve. For those of you that are interested in shooting holy grail shots, this method will definitely work for you as well. The first thing before you start shooting is you wanna set up your camera for the best results. For this demonstration, I'm using the Sony A1, but this method will work for all Sony cameras, Mark III and above, as well as other manufacturers' bodies like Canon and Nikon. To start, turn off autofocus and image stabilization on your lens if it has it. The same goes with the IBIS as well. Next, set your white balance to whatever color temperature your starting frame is. Then we're going to adjust our minimum maximum ISO to 100, 2000. This is going to tell our camera that the max ISO we want when ramping in tonight will be 2000 ISO. Inside of the menu, we're gonna change the minimum shutter speed for aperture priority. One of the cool things about the Sony Alpha 1 or if you're using the Sony A7S 3 or R4 is that they added the ability to either do slow or fast shutter speed changes as the camera ramps up or down, uh, which helps keep your ISO levels lower throughout the entire shoot. This function also allows you to use longer shutter speeds to potentially add motion blur to your frames, which is great if you have people or cars in your shot. This also gives it a much more cinematic look. The last step is turning your camera to aperture priority. And yeah, I know in the past this would be a cardinal sin. You never would want to put it on aperture priority. But in the last couple of years, Sony's light meter is so on point that you really don't have to worry about capturing the shot in manual mode anymore and stopping down manually. Um, and you don't have to worry about flicker. So aperture priority is definitely the way to go. This is going to give you the cleanest, most professional looking transition without any headaches. Here's a few examples of shots I've captured using this method just for your reference. Now let's talk about the post-production workflow. If you haven't already checked out my tutorial on how to do basic processing, check it out. I'm gonna skip over how to import the raw files into Resolve, but the only thing you really have to do is convert your images to DNG with the Adobe DNG converter, and you'll be set. So let's go ahead and jump inside of DaVinci Resolve. As you can see here, I've already imported my DNG files. Um, I've got both a static shot of this uh, day to night that I did over in uh, downtown DC, and then I also have a motion controlled shot that was done in DC. And this is just gonna show you that you can use this process for both motion controlled shots as well as stationary shots, which I think is really great and it's really versatile. Um, so what we're gonna do is I've already dragged down my uh, motion control shot, as you can see here, I'll play it back. You can see it in real time playing. Um, this is all set with the settings that we just used with aperture priority and setting a minimum maximum um, ISO. Um, and it does a really nice job of ramping from day into night without too much hassle. Um, there is just a slight flicker um, when we come in, when the lights turn on, um, or right around the, uh, I guess the eight or nine second mark, and I'll show you how to get rid of that as well. But for the most part, this shot looks pretty good. Um, but as you can see, when you import DNG, or I should say convert Sony files or Sony RAW files to DNG, uh, what happens is it actually desaturates the color and it gives it a very flat appearance. But it can all be fixed inside of post-production. So we're gonna go down to our color tab here, and this is where we're gonna start working our magic for this day to night sequence. What I'm gonna do is go to the left-hand side where it says raw camera. I'm gonna click raw camera. And then make sure you have decoding using clip selected. And then I'm gonna come in here and change the white balance. Now, what we wanna start off with first is the daytime white balance because that's gonna be the most important part. And I'll tell you why uh, in just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is gonna get that color temp right, but first we're gonna increase that saturation. I like to put it at about 15%. And then I also add a color boost of about 15% as well. And we just wanna bring back in those natural colors that were in the scene when we started. I'm also going to apply a tint because it's a little green and we'll balance it out right there. And that looks great. I'm also gonna go through and set all the exposure changes that I want um, as they're happening in real time. So I'm gonna set my shadows up a little bit, bring out more of that beautiful scenery that's in the shot going to decrease my highlights so I want to be able to see um, all of the clouds that are in the sky as well as the interior of the building. As exposure goes, I'm going to look at my waveform monitor over here and I can bring up the exposure quite a bit. We just don't want to peek it out. 
and then um, what I'll do is I'll lift it. I'll decrease my lift a little bit to add a little more contrast. You can see when we decrease that lift, all of the colors are shifting downwards, which is great, which is creating that um, really nice um, color tone between dark, light, and uh, midtones. So this is a pretty acceptable color grade. Um, you can obviously go further uh, in your own processing, but I just want to show you the basics of how to do this. So if I were to play this now, uh, we'll get a playback and it's playing back and it looks great. We're capturing that golden light as it's coming through the scene. And then we get that transition in from day into night. That's when the color starts to uh, get a little wonky. And that's because we've got tungsten lights with fluorescent lights and we're using a sunlit uh, white balance. And that's a big issue there. So what I want to show you is how you can take two white balances and merge them together um, just using a simple splice um, and cut, which is really easy to do. And this really negates having to use programs like LR time lapse, where you're going in, keyframing each individual position, uh, and then changing those variables, rendering it out, and then you know going back into post production. This gives you like a one-stop shop um, in creating a beautiful um, you know day to night time lapse without having to go through all of the hurdles and hassle um, of using extra programs and extra steps. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my editing tab here. And if I play it, again, we're being able to see everything that's happening in real time. Great, we've got the light change. And right around, I guess, the eight second mark, that's when the light starts to change. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my cursor on the timeline right here. I'm going to use the magnet tool to make sure I get a proper snap. And then I'm going to cut this section here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. So I'm gonna Control C. Control V. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our opacity tab up here on the left hand side and I'm going to drag it to the right about one and a half to two seconds. And what that's going to do is give us a clean transition from day into night with the white balance. So I'll come back here. We'll do the same process we did before. I'm going to go back into my color tab here. This time we're just going to change the color temperature from what it was to its new color temperature. And I'm going to go for something that's much cooler and much more pronounced. And as you can see, we've got a really nice balanced image. Um, it's a little blue, so I'll increase it just a little bit so we can get some of those um, nice warm tones back in there. Uh, but as you can see, the white balance inside the building is correct, as is the white balance on the outside. Now, uh, you can come back through here and change some more settings if you want. You can you know, boost the color, you can change the exposure, you can increase or decrease um, the highlights. You can see here, um, you know, if I decrease the highlights all the way down, we're getting all of the information that's inside this building as well as all of the information that's on the outside. And this is just really beautiful. I'll come back here, and then all we got to do now is play it. And we've created a beautiful transition from day into night. We've uh, you know ramped our white balance. We've changed the exposure to what we want it set to, and that's it. It's so easy to do now. Uh, you know, in the past it took you know probably hours to do this. Um, whereas if you use DaVinci Resolve, it can be done in just a matter of a few minutes. So pretty incredible. Uh, this method also works for day to night Holy Grail shots. So if you are shooting daytime landscapes and you want to go into Astro, this. Uh, process works identically and it's really wonderful. Um, you know, using DaVinci Resolve is probably one of the biggest um, benefits for my time lapse workflow that I've seen in a long time because while Adobe is great and you can go through and really customize and fine tune inside of, you know, Lightroom and then LR time lapse, I find you just have more versatility and the end result and the quality is much better and far superior inside of DaVinci Resolve. And you can also export natively at 8K as well as getting all the codecs that you want and you can master all of the color locally uh, without having to destroy anything and having to, you know, output uh, proxies or anything of that nature. So really, this is just one of my favorite workflows to use, and it's really completely changed how I shoot um, anything that's time lapse related, whether it's just stationary daytime time lapse or doing beautiful day to night time lapses and so forth. Anyway, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate all the comments you guys have. If you have any questions about this process, put them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and as always, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Happy shooting.